All right, let's go. It is time for Battletech. My name is Saiken, and today we're going to start our official Battletech playthrough with all of the DLCs. Install Flashpoint for some extra Flashpoints, Urban Warfare for the great urban environment, and Heavy Metal for even more mechs, because there is no such thing as enough mechs. Anyways, today we're going to go into a career, and I figured we're going to do a nice, almost nightmarish uh, campaign. And what I mean with that is we're going to increase the difficulty as much as possible. We're unequipping mechs, meaning no mechs uh, will receive equipment when we take that. Iron Man mode, of course. Enemy strength force hard. I wish we could make it even harder than that. Mech destruction is definitely a okay, meaning if we're losing a mech, it will be completely destroyed. We're having stingy salvage. We have lethality, which means once uh, as, as soon as um, a mech warrior would be incapacitated, they're automatically killed. No rare salvage. That is good because we're, we don't want the artifacts by just salvaging them. Mech warrior progression will be very, very slow, and that is another important one because that makes it more meaningful and harder if we're actually losing a mech warrior. We're going to go with stingy contract payment and very rare advanced mechs. We're randomizing our starting mechs, yeah, because that's fun. Now, the only thing that I wouldn't want to change is the parts for mech assembly. And I thought long and hard about it. I have no problem playing that campaign here with uh, seven or even eight parts uh, for uh, mech assembly. The issue that I'm seeing is it will greatly reduce the viewer's pleasure. What I want to reach with this playthrough is mainly a very nice bouquet of different mechs. I want to go through... Um, different options and I want to specifically showcase different builds. All of that is only possible if I can actually assemble mechs and not need to grind through mission after mission after mission because that is what's typically happening if you need more parts for assembly. So that is our starting setup. Pretty much the hardest that Battletech offers and now it is time for us to take a look at our crew. Good. First things first, what do we actually want to do in this playthrough? I think we want to be more or less independent, which is why I would take Steiner. Steiner is the only large house faction that is not available on the map that you can play. So these are more like renegades here and there. You will see Steiner faction rewards, but there is no planet that really belongs to them. I would like to be exiled because that sounds great and what would someone that has been exiled do they would probably go into the pirates so that is that sounds like something that could uh, work for us so we're going to play a he or furthermore I'm going to take a look Hmm, who could be our main character? I think the main character would be Hawkbite, because that's my signature character in XCOM 2. Might as well play Hawkbite here. Unfortunately, we don't really have kind of a Hawkbite-ish uh, looking character, because there's no one with a full-fledged helmet. So, how can we replicate that? How about we're just taking... Someone who looks like a Templar. I like his tattoos, so we're probably going to stick with him. Let's say that that here is Hogbite. And that's really his only name. Ah, damn, you need a last name. Well... And it is Brian McLean, aka Hawkbite. Sounds like a good main character to start with. And we're going to take a look at our crew. So first things first with the Mac Warriors. Following the whole scenery about Hawkbite, how about we're customizing Flynn here to be an actuality. Dragonova. 
So she's the Reaper. Oh, wait a second. The Reaper was called Dragonover and her call sign is Reaper. I love it. Good. Dragonover. Um, Svedlog. How does she potentially look underneath her, uh, underneath her helmet? And why is it even possible to give a female character facial hair? All right, well, let's give her some nasty tattoos. I, I imagine Dragonova to be like one of, uh, one of the more heavier tattooed characters. And in terms of clothing. Yeah, that here looks pretty much like a Reaper. Full white light. I like it. Yeah, we're eventually getting there. I'm not sure if I like the short hair, to be honest. How does a female... Oh, well, never mind. It's a different universe, guys, and uh, that is what we're getting. Anyways, a little bit more stricter bun uh, that looks like Dragonover. Fantastic. So, we got Hogbite, we got uh, Dragonover, aka the Reaper. Let's continue with Mox. This here looks like Mox. Fantastic. Abraham. I like that. Not everybody needs a tattoo. Let's go with that. Maybe a little bit more facial hair. As someone who has been previously with Advent, I want to give him more of an armor type. That looks almost like a Reaper. And Mox is a he. Fantastic. Good. Got three characters down. Two more to go. Who could join these bad boys? Um, what can I do for you? You know what? It's time to get Bradford in here. Let me just double check and try to create the best Bradford imitation that I can do. Okay. After a bit of trying, I created John Bradford, uh, aka Bradford. You can leave in the comment down below how well that uh, resembles him. Believe me, it is actually quite difficult to get Bradford in in the um, Battletech kind of universe. We got the green sweater and his typical like worried face. I'm almost hearing his voice in my head, uh, Commander. Um, we got to move fast. The aliens are making progress. So that's fantastic. He's definitely going to be one of our teams. So we got, we got Mox, we got uh, Reaper, we got Hawkbite and yep, Bradford. So he's going to be the last one. Potentially Shen. Would that be a good idea? Why not? Let's go for Shen. All right. This is Lily Sheng. And believe me, that is the closest that I could get to it. The amount of hairstyles that they do have available, which are not falling into the category of homeless person or... Uh, punk rock band member is astonishingly low. So they did not have a Shelly, uh, a Lily Shen hair style. Anyways, we got uh, Lily Shen with us. We got Bradford. Uh, we got Hogbite himself. We got Lily. We got Max and we got Reaper, AKA Dragonover. So that sounds like an awesome team to begin with. Let's take a look at our mech bay. Real quick before we even take uh, a look at the tasks that we do have available we are being blessed with the blackjack probably one of the better uh, first drafts you typically when you get 
a random set of mechs. You get two medium and three uh, light mechs. The blackjack being a pretty decent kind of all around fire platform and having so many laser hard points will make it easy for us to build something nice out of it. The Vindicator, on the other hand, uh, is a pretty specific mech, so we're probably stuck with definitely a pure laser boat on both of them. Here we would have the option for ACs as longer range weapons. So let's see how we're going to build both of them. Panther is a fantastic light mech, one of the better ones overall. Firestarter is probably the best light mech that you can get from the start, so the game blesses us. And then there's the urban mech, which is the meme mech. Yes, it works, but nah, not really. So we are going to use that whenever needed, but it's nice to have an AC-10, I suppose. So that as a weapon works well. So the first thing that I do in every campaign when we're starting is I want to play efficiently. Uh, we're not going to go through the whole time of uh, this career uh, mode. It's probably going to take too long. But as a goal for the overall career, I would uh, say it's realistic to say we want to kind of obtain a nice lance of four uh, salt max and in the progress of that we're just playing through a few flashpoints and whenever we feel like uh, most of the challenges are overcome then i think it's fair to kind of call it a one campaign in the meantime what i want to do at the beginning is we're going to start removing the jump jets out of the medium uh, max and at the same time I'm not 100% happy with the AC ammunition here, but moving it to there uh, will take a day and I do not want to spend a day. So instead, we're going to maximize the armor that we do have available, reduce some of the back armor, which is always an option. If you know how to position well, you should typically not get hit into the back. We're upgrading the armor at both of the arms. And that looks like a pretty solid setup. I tend to work with as much armor as I can get. And in my guides, I will talk about why armor in Battletech is absolutely superior just from a mathematical standpoint. So what we've done is we've lost, quote unquote, some mobility. Not really, but it is what it is. Uh, we've gained uh, some heat efficiency because the jump jets would have uh, costed quite a bit of heat in order to uh, run them. And we pretty much remain the same firepower. 150 is okay. It's certainly not great. And uh, the moment that we can rework this bad boy here, we're definitely going to do that. It does not cost us any time, which is exactly why I did it right away. We're going to do the same with the Vindicator here. Indicator has plenty of heat sinks, that's fantastic. Has a PPC and LRMs, so the Vindicator currently is in a sniper long range uh, setup. Typically, you would want to have jump jets to get to high ground. My experience is you can reach high ground in different means, so there is really no need to, uh, to take them in. And my experience is also, you're often being ambushed one way or the other. So just relying on not being in the combat as a sniper is typically a pretty futile effort. So we're going to max out all of the armor that we can get. We're trading the jump jets in return, which is a pretty fair setup. I definitely don't like the setup here for only 115 damage. Uh, so we're sooner or later going to rework this platform the vindicator is an excellent platform by the way to uh, to run ranged combat the panther is an all-round uh, platform the way that it is currently set up is more kind of a ranged ish brawler one ppc a few heat sinks jumps reds that's all fine and good the problem is way too little armor uh, as we as it currently stands so it's either uh, the small ranged missiles are going, which we don't want to, because, I mean, look at that pathetic firepower. 
well, we're going to get rid of the jump jet. So what we're going to do is similarly here. We're increasing all of the armor. Arms are full. And that should be good to go. Panther is ready. At last, but certainly not least, we're going to go through the fire starter. The standard loadout for a fire starter is optimizable. Let's put it that way. Uh, the flamers as a weapon are not really ranking very high in my per uh, personal preference. And the reason why that is they are not really doing a lot. So what we could do is we're either going with flamers and are hoping to overheat something or we're going with the jump jets and are hoping to tank. We would then rely on two machine guns and two medium lasers. That's not a fantastic outlook, but by considering it, how much would we actually gain if we're getting rid of uh, these guys that's like four tons holy shit we can even all right so let's try that again maximizing the armor for three tons okay that sounds about right Good. We're maximizing armor on all of our body parts, short of the back. Good. I still squeezed one flamer in. I'm not going to pretend that that is going to make a massive difference, but instead of just wasting uh, tonnage, might as well have a flamer in there. Like I said, I am. I could be less than excited about right. the standard loadout but the fire starter has a fantastic abnormally good loadout with the support weapon hard points six support weapons make for a lot of uh, damage so before we're continuing here power systems is the first upgrade that's a standard because we needed to increase the drive system later let's take a look where we've landed on the star map Fantastic. Somewhere in the middle of nowhere. That's the pirate quadrant. There is no flesh point yet, so that looks quite good. We can uh, start here. No problem whatsoever. In terms of hiring, are there any recruits that are noticeable? This one here isn't bad because it has a low cost, but we currently don't need an extra recruit, so I think we're fine. Let's take a look at uh, the contracts after we've customized all of the stuff, let's get going with the actual game. Good, so in terms of contexts, uh, we do have quite a bit. We got the local uh, planetary government, which typically just reduces an import faction, but really doesn't give you anything in return. So unless it is something really, really nice, like the 416 uh, salvage. Oh, that reduces it is with the pirates. No, that's not going to happen. Pirates is going to be our main faction because we are a pirate. Let's face it. So pretty limited options here. I mean... We got to start it. Uh, the only thing that we're not going to do is we're not going to reduce the pirates. So this mission here, show forces off of the table. Let's start with a nice little one skull mission here. What would be the best one? Capture a base? Yeah, capture a base sounds fun. 312 uh, salvage or we're going with just more money. Typically, I am maximizing it in one direction. But I think for now, we could even kind of go 50-50. The pay is okay. 2-9, 3-12. Well, 
let's go more on the salvage side. I hate working for the planetary government. That's kind of the worst thing that could happen. But to get the campaign started, might as well start with doing that. Hogbite is going to lead uh, the team. Bradford uh, is going to be uh, with us. Lily is going to sit in the Firestarter and Mox takes the Pander. Sounds like a good team. We throughout uh, our stats, no one here has great stats. The one thing that we should do is I think Hogbite, let's just do that real quick, sorry or jumping back and forth. I think Hogbite had a couple of uh, experience points left over. So we're going to go for Gunnery 4 and Tactics 4. Fantastic. Everybody else is at 0 XP. Good. Same deal. We wanted a bit more salvage. And Hogbite is going to start. Bradford selping him on the Vindicator. Lily on the Fire Starter. And Mox will have the Panther. Looks like a pretty decent team. Let's deploy and get this one going. Good, we are landing. Hogbite and the Lance has landed. Ooh. The one thing that I forgot is we did not even give our Lance a name. Well, we are going to do that right after the mission, shall we? But first, let's scout the forest. We're sprinting ahead, staying in the trees. Roger. Got it. Mainly to get that sweet, sweet 20% bonus versus damage. One thing that I learned with this game is cluster up, stay together, and you're going to be fine. Scout ahead alone, and you're typically going to be killed. Careful here with the water. Careful here with the water. You betcha. We're going to move over. Confirmed. So far, we have not triggered any enemy. Ready for orders. That's exactly how Let's it move. should be for now. Sprinting over. Coordinates received. Move on out. And the moment that we move into that capture zone, you can already foresee that confirmed. that is going to be uh -huh. trouble. Be there in the chip. Heads up, Commander. You've got hostile contacts in. Well, probably even earlier than that. Enemy contact. The first fight is going to happen. We got two light mechs and whatever else is upon us. So we're just going to play the reserve game for now. Essentially abusing the fact that we have a lot of movement blips from our previous movement. We can see a Jenner. Not very well armored there is another shot indicating a third light mech potentially a medium mech nope Standing by. all right good so let's start two blips so who is going to who Commander. is going to take away his blips i think with a range weapon this year would be good enough the panther doesn't have a lot of damage potential so might as well just take one blip away cool we even hit uh, almost destroyed the torso fantastic good now the heavier hitters can move in and get better percentage shots straight up an unal uh, unaltered shot onto this jenner here and we can see the third mech right there the general takes quite a bit of damage. Vindicator is the second. Well, he's I hear ya. kind of more of a ranged combatant. But we're still fine. That's a range that works out very well. I could fight up here on the hill. 
but I prefer to stick in the woods for now. Medium laser, pretty low here, long range, target size. Yeah, so it's, we're, we're, that's the problem with that setup. PPC is a long ranged weapon, a very long range weapon. Medium laser is a medium range weapon. So you typically have kind of the PPC and the LRM working well, and the other two not so much. But we hit, and one side of the Jenner is completely gone. Fantastic. Fire starter can tank all of them, and the way that they will do it is by creating six blips. Taking the high road. Jumping in. And let's attack this guy. We do certainly not need a flamer. We're saving our ammunition uh -huh. there. There's more where that came from. Good. The Jenner is unstable. And now they are unloading on the fire st uh, starter. So Lily is tanking for the team. Panther is trying to take a shot, but not against six blips. It's not happening. Another Panther and another miss. Fantastic. So it seems to be a lance of three. Let's just give it some more time. We're reserving all the way to the end. Good. We got enough resolve for pre uh, precision strike. Jenner here looks pretty bad hurt. Might be the right time to send it back home taking a precision strike and hog bite with the heaviest mech and the biggest loadout does exactly that g g Orders. okay two blips is fine the alternative is one over here i think this should be good Decent, not good, decent. Equally decent. We could go for with our long range weapon for this guy here. I think that's okay. He does not have the bonus from the wood, so no 20% damage reduction. Target locked. It's go time. And we're taking a bit of his order. defense away. Straight shot? Yep. Looks like it. Panther moves up all the way to here. Yeah, two 70% shots did unfortunately miss, so that's a bummer. How about we're switching around and the panther just takes some more damage. There's a certain incentive. Nice. The rear damage worked very well. There's a certain incentive for them to just melee attack the fire starter, but they're not doing it. Instead, the panther attacks the blackjack and that's just not going to deal enough damage. Blackjack, medium mech is pretty well suited to deal with a small mech like that. In the meantime, we're moving using our sniper. Fantastic shot. Sensor's appeared means he will have a problem to even hit. Yeah, and you can see it. What? Hogby took a hit on the very first mission. Fantastic. Our main character is already going to be out of commission. Oh, it's wonderful. Just what you want to see, right? Good. Moving up. Oh, but still can unload completely. Says thank you to the pilot. 
and destroys him. Second kill. He is on fire. Only disappointing part really is the whole taking damage. On my way. All right, Panther, let's reduce his initiative by one, which is why we're using precision shot. Locking on target. And of course, we're also hitting him nicely in his belly region. Normal movement, this time without the support of the jump jets. The nice uh, Tundra biome will increase the heat sinking abilities and really two lasers and a few machine guns will not deal just as much heat. Good to go. Receiving you. Good. Mox moves over here. Heading out. And is in the sweet spot of kind of that medium range. Hits. And this guy Waiting is on you, unsteady. We still got enough for... No, we do not enough. I have enough for precision strike. That is... Not good. We're jumping up here. That little piece prevents us from being melee attacked unless he has jumped uh, pets as well. And we're continuing our fire on the rear area. Fantastic hit. Pilot injured. Yeah, structure is exposed, but nothing major. This time, second turns around. Targeting rear armor. And targets the enemy rear armor. Enemy mech destroyed. Hawk by rather not Saiken. Good. All we need to do is occupy the fortress and then this mission should be over. Moving On my way. On the move. Fantastic. Well, good first mission. Unfortunately, we already got a head hit, which is rare, very rare, but it can happen. So we got 150,000 credits. Moderate damage, I would say that's fine. The 23 days injury is what is most annoying and what could be our salvage really what could be our salvage i mean we could go for another ppc uh, not great but okay and we could try to go for that jenner uh, for that panther here I usually don't want to go for small mechs because, well, we could try it. You know what? Oh, let's just try it. That will give us another mech. And maybe we're getting a PPC. Yeah, we're, even, we're even getting both of them and a heatsink. So it's a decent, a decent loot. I'll try to keep all of uh, the in-game segments to about 30 to 45 minutes so that we do have kind of a nice setup for each of the missions. So the last thing that we're going to do before we're ending the first episode of our Battletech run is we're going to give our platoon a proper name and a proper customization. What should our sign look like? I like I like the whole pirate theme, so that's not too bad. What else could we do? That one isn't bad. I never had it. Or kind of a demonic one. That's good. Uh, 
That's more a samurai one. What's going to be our theme? It's, by the way, one of the things that works perfectly if the audience can directly interact. So I'm pretty sure everybody here has an opinion about what a cool sign looks like. For me, I'm looking for something that's inspiring. There are a few lion brigades, but I had that in the past, so that's not going to work. Something that will tie the whole run together. That here looks like a pair of scissors, but at the same time like a bunny. Hmm. Probably not serious enough. I like that. How about we, uh, this is kind of the song of death and we're calling the whole thing Swan Song. That would give it a, um, a bit of a dire appeal. I like something that is a bit more, a bit more dire, a bit more consequential. So, we're going to go potentially with a red circle. How would we want to do that? I think that's the correct color. Don't worry about the specifics where they are painted. Every single mech is going to be painted differently. But yeah, potentially, you know what? We're going to go with the greenish tone. I like that. Two different colors of green. And then we have a red highlight. It's not too bad. Was there a green shadow? No, of course, that's the only thing that's missing. I think that one works as well. Not too much color. We don't want to be kind of a war horde. Yeah, Swan Song. That's it. Hogbite's Marauders is no longer, it is Swan Song. And this will be the Swan Song uh, campaign. I like that. It gives it a good appeal. If you like it as well, and if you like Battletech, then let's have a fun time together. Hit the like button below and leave a comment. I want to see the first episode of comments explode so that we can chat a bit about uh, Battletech. Maybe you can start telling me about uh, what you think of the game in general. Thanks for watching guys and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.